Welcome to the Wolverine uh, video cast. I'm John Borton here with Jerry Hamlin and Coach Hamlin. We saw something very different last week, uh, Michigan against Minnesota, and we want to talk about that today. Uh, you, you saw Taylor Lewan moving around a little bit, saying he afterwards said, I've never played before with my right hand on the ground, and but he did in this game, and that's what we want to take a look at. Well, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a nuance that you can throw into your offense, and when you bring a tackle over in it, either uh, bringing the right tackle to the left side or the left tackle to the right side, uh, it doesn't make any difference. It gives you a stronger uh, point of attack over there as far as coming off the football is concerned. And so uh, it does open up the hole a little bit more, gives you an opportunity to, uh, to maybe uh, bring another uh, factor into your football by pulling the backside guard and leading your fullback and so running isolation and power football become a factor in this situation. I'll just show you here a little All bit. Alright, let's take a look. If you take a look here, we've taken our left tackle and moved him over here and placed him on the outside at the tight end position and put the tight end on the backside over here. So what happens is now they have to kind of worry about, they can't overshift too much because there's still a factor of running back this way, but if they try, if they don't, here's what happens. Your tackle now is blocking an outside linebacker or defensive end, and by blocking him, he can usually get some movement, which opens up your hole a lot more to the inside. So you can run a number of different things. For instance, you can base block, come down, double him, and come off on that man there, lead your fullback up through to block that as a as a really a isolation play. But what we were doing, along with helping the isolation play, we also blocked our center back and pulled the guard and brought him around to fill to get into the hole. Sometimes we were able, if this man had flowed too quickly, then he could pick him and your tackle could take the backside linebacker. So then the tight end would be able to cut off the backside and you had, uh, because of the movement by your tackle on the end, it opened up a greater hole and gave our kids some chance to get some, find some light to run in there. So that is what we, they're trying to do. And you don't, you don't necessarily have to pull the backside guard because you can run it as an isolation. You can also run it as power. And so that gives you an idea of what they were trying to do. And we did get a lot more movement in the area and we had broke some plays up. Every once in a while, we didn't do a good job of sealing this guy and coming off and he would sneak in and get a play off the backside or we wouldn't get off and the linebacker would get in the hole. But for the most part, we were doing a pretty good job with running the power and the isolation to the strong side. Okay, so then the question becomes, how do you avoid this becoming a huge red flag? You see Taylor Lewan coming over here and all of a sudden the sirens are going off and well, we better overload because they're going to go this way. That's right. Now if they do that, your linebackers probably will start to run a little shift. So this linebacker would move a little bit more to that position and he would move there so that they have a little better angle and make it a little tougher for you to get into the hole. <clears throat> Whenever they do that, now you can do just the opposite. You can block your tight end, who has already been a blocker, so it isn't like he hasn't done it before, and you can block here, block back, and pull the guard around this fashion, and run your fullback through, and run the isolation play into the short side, because you've created the angle blocks for your line, and that's very important. So, but the other thing that you can do is, uh, is as this man, uh, can if you bring him back off the line of scrimmage, which Shea will do, and walk him up, he's a viable receiver now. So if they start shifting linebackers and going this way, run him off and run him into the flat, it's pretty tough coverage for a linebacker to try to take a tight end to the flat if you're going to run the half back off. So those are a couple of things you can do. You can do it off of a little bootleg, or you can do it off with just a little sprint, or just set up and throw. So if you want to overshift to the front side, you got to be a little careful because they can hit you to the weak side also. How much of this did you do when, uh, when you were coaching the offensive line in terms of uh, 
moving a guy over and, and uh, having a couple of tackles bunched together? Well, once in a while, not too often. If down on the goal line, in goal line offense, sometimes we put the tackles together to get a little more moving at that point of attack. But uh, I, I really emphasized that our tight ends had to block. And so uh, if we put a tackle over there, that made that tight end, he, uh-uh, you aren't taking my position, I'm staying here. And then made him block a little bit harder. So uh, we kept him, uh, we made sure that the tight ends could come off the ball. Or, and uh, we weren't always, but pretty successful for our kids coming off and being able to handle that position. All right. Well, we will keep an eye on what they do and where they go with this going forward. But uh, thank you for coming in to explain it to us and give us a, a good look on the on the whiteboard. Well, I hope the kids uh, uh, do do this and do it well. But uh, I, I hope the fans get a joy out of it too.